everybody. Welcome to the Snow West Show. I'm your host, Ryan Harris. Uh, got a fun show today here for you. Um, a little while ago, we had uh, a, a contest you probably all saw on social media or email blast, and we we gave away a, a VIP media pass experience to go see the 2025 Skidoo launch. And so today we're going to have our winner of that contest on, and we're going to talk about that whole experience. Um, with me here in studio, though, is uh, Snow West test writer Bruce Kerbs. How you doing, Bruce? Good. How are you doing? Good. Still sore from snowshoot? Yeah, a little bit. It's been a long couple of weeks. It has. Yeah, we, we, we rode like a week ago in Quebec, Ontario, or Quebec, Canada. Yep. I can't even, I don't even know how the provinces work. Lana can come <laughs> on in a minute and help us with that. Yeah. And then a couple of days later, clear out and back here in the West, in West Yellowstone and Island Park. Yeah. Backyard. I guess that's like, the that, fun part of our job, right? That was, that was quite the experience. Yeah. And the, the, yeah, the, the stuff out there on the East coast, that was uh, surprisingly fun. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we just finished up with, uh, with snow shoot and the 2025 skidoo launch that was, uh, just a few days before that. That was a week ago, Tuesday, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tuesday, yeah. February 20th. Um, so before we jump into that and talk about all the new skidoos, we want to thank our sponsors. So the snow West show is brought to you by Polaris snowmobiles, the Polaris pro RMK, chaos RMK, Engineered for instant lift, effortless control, and immediate response. Yeah, you know, we normally have a pop quiz on that, but I think we got that. I think we got that dialed. You should have a dialed. Check out the uh, the 850 RMK now in stock at your local Polaris dealer. Uh, go to Polaris.com to learn more. There's some amazing deals happening right now, especially on the Polarises. Uh, I was talking to Dylan Boyce this morning. He uh, he was a Skidoo guy, mm -hmm. and he he went out and rode a buddy's 9R. And just like that, it was like, okay, I'm an INR guy now. Really? Just and this year? Yeah, just this year, just recently. And he actually went over to, to Action. But, and and I don't know what, how the story goes, but he wound up buying a, a 23 carryover boost. And then uh, rode a 9R again and was like, yeah, this is not the same. I want a 9R. Huh. So now he's in the process of trading that 23 boost in on a 23 carryover 9R. Because, because the pricing is incredible right now. Yeah. I mean, you can get those 23 carryovers for three grand less than a 24 right now. Wow. So Seems. time to buy. Yeah, for sure. It's buying season on the players. Probably warranty and everything. Yeah. Yeah. You get the warranty, you get the incentives. That's good. Yeah. It's impressive. So we, we were talking about all the differences between the 23 RMKs and the 24 RMKs. And yeah, it's, uh, I think we're going to have him on later because that's, that's an interesting conversation is, is. You know, we always talk about people that say they can only ride one brand or the other. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we always say, well, no, you, you just need to spend more time on it. Like a five minute rip on your buddy's sled is not enough to, yeah, to tell you that you can or can't ride that. So you just need to spend more time on it. So anyway, yeah, we'll have Dylan Boyce on later. We'll, we'll set that up. Cool. Uh, another sponsor of the show, uh, located in Big Sky, Montana, five minutes away from Buck Ridge and Carrot Basin. 320 Guest Ranch offers lodging and accommodations for your next snowmobiling trip. They have single cabins and large full cabins with kitchens. Uh, you can take your big riding group or just head up there by yourself. 320 Guest Ranch is a great place to call home for your next adventure. Check it out at 320ranch.com. All right, uh, we're going to jump in here, talk about Club Skidoo 2025, and we're going to bring in our contest winner. Again, this is the, the Snow West VIP Media Experience, All Access Media Pass, uh, where we we had a winner and took took this guy to uh to quebec canada uh -huh. montreal flew into montreal well he flew into a lot of places <laughs> stayed in a lot of places yeah eventually made it to montreal eventually and uh, he got to go tour the skidoo factory go to the race shop and then uh come hang out with us as we did the uh, skidoo launch uh saw everything live with everybody else all the dealers and then we had access to the showroom so all the 2025 models Lynx and Skidoo in a big showroom there, and you had all all the Skidoo and Lynx ambassadors. Ross Robinson was there, uh -huh. uh, Tony Jenkins, Steve Martin, Carl Kuster. Uh, you had all the Skidoo engineers there, the mountain engineering team. Uh, so yeah, we had had access to all the all the new sleds, all the people, and just it was, it was a pretty cool experience. It was fun. And so this is kind of the first one that we've gone to since COVID. Um, and it was, it was a hybrid. So they, they did kind of a virtual launch online mm -hmm. and then opened up the showroom. And so it, in a way it was good because we had total access to all the sled. Nobody yeah. else was there. It was just, just media and ambassadors. Yeah. And that was, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. So our winner, uh, for this contest for the snowest VIP all access media pass, uh, 
You know him on Instagram as LJP116. He has another account uh, for his YouTube channel at mountainstandardtime.ca. Landon Pavan. Am I saying that right, Landon? Yeah, yeah, you're saying that right. You got it. <laughs> All right, sorry. I, I'm, I'm, I know I butchered your name a few times, but Landon Pavan. Yeah, so we've, you're, you're a fairly well-known uh, backcountry rider that has been on a skidoo for a long time. You've got, you've got a, a really significant following. You're the dude on the green skidoo, like the Kermit Frog yeah, green, the green skidoo. skidoo. And, yeah. and and we're we're <laughs> talking about that. So what? Tell us again why why you went with that green wrap and and kind of the story behind that. Uh, the story behind the green wrap, uh, like all throughout when I was growing up, green was always my favorite color. It always it always stood out to me, and uh, uh, and I also when I look at sleds and sled wraps, I, I really like a really simple design, and and uh, to me. Uh, a simple design and then with logos uh, for sponsors shows up really well. And so I, I just, I picked green the one year and, and uh, a lot of positive feedback on it. Every time I looked at my sled, I liked it. And uh, you know, some people would, would comment and, and say, Oh, you know, wh- why are you wrapping your skidoo green? Just get an Arctic cat. <laughs> and uh, so laughed at that and, you know, it, uh, nobody else really had green skidoos, so I, uh, I just I just stuck with it after that first year of wrapping it all green, and and uh, I kept it like that, and and it's kind of caught on, and now now people know know me for having a green, completely green sled. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a pretty impressive marketing maneuver because it it is the only Kermit Gra- Kermit Frog green skidoo out there. So if you've if you've seen Landon, you know, flipping upside down. You've got a you've got a, a clip that went pretty crazy of you uh, hitting the lip and then going off over the bars as, as a chain broke, um, the, just some wild <laughs> wild stuff. But but phenomenal rider. So if you've seen a guy doing some crazy stuff on a green skidoo, it's it's landing. Like it's it's not easy to mistake this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're you're fun to watch on uh, their Instagram. I'm always excited uh, when you, you post some thank new you. stuff. So. <laughs> So Landon, so yeah, you, you won this contest and, and each media group, uh, kind of ran a similar contest. And so we had a handful of, uh, of enthusiasts out there, uh, similar to your situation that, that won this contest and came out and got to go experience Club Skidoo. Um, what talk, talk a little bit just about the overall experience, like getting there was not a fun trip for you, but you eventually got there. Like just kind of talk about the experience for a minute. Yeah, so uh well to start off with uh uh it was it was cool being able to enter for the contest. Really cool at Skidoo and the you know, Skidoo teamed up with uh the media companies in Snow West to offer offer an opportunity like this for you know, people that aren't really in the industry for for media or, you know, would would never get a chance to go to something like that other than uh through a contest like that. And uh and then for getting there, the the trip from Kelowna uh, to Montreal that was that was pretty complicated with uh, delayed flights and then and then misconnections and and uh, so it, was, it it took significantly longer to get there than I than I had uh, thought. But uh, super excited that still made it in time to get like 15 minutes in the Skidoo's race shop there. So that was <laughs> that was super cool and and uh, yeah. It was uh, it was great to be part of it all. Uh, the first day toured the the ski do factory as well, so you know that was uh, amazing to see the production line. They were uh, they were currently building uh, their spiders, the Can Am spiders in there. So didn't didn't get to see the, any sleds being built, but it was still really neat seeing how how uh, how everything was put together and how they can how they can switch the assembly line from spiders to snowmobiles and uh in you know in an afternoon which which was probably one of the coolest things i learned so what what was the uh the race shop tour like what what'd you learn there uh the race shop uh didn't didn't get a a, a whole lot of time in there because uh, oh I, you I just, just caught the last tail end of that. that's right that's right yeah yeah but it was uh it was really exciting because uh you know of course they had the the race slides you know the modified race slides sitting there and uh, I, have, I, I currently actually bought one this fall to do some mountain riding with. And so, it was, you know, it was cool 
seen I've already seen them in person because I have one sitting in my shop now. But uh, seeing the process of you know all the all the tools that they have, all the parts, like it's it's just crazy. Uh, the environment there that they're able, like everything, they got everything imaginable to be able to build whatever they want, and uh, it's, it's cool knowing that that's where a lot of a lot of the first ideas and and first parts get made to then be put on to the race sleds and then that trickles down and into the the trail sleds and the the consumer sleds yeah so like that the new raz rx front end that's on the mxz and the what was the one that wrote the backcountry yeah that 43 inch wide front end like that that's direct tech from from race sleds like that develop that that taller yeah. spindle and the a-arm all of that stuff that that's all straight off the race sled so yeah it is you know we've come a long way in in 20 years on on race sleds uh to where these really are just tools for r&d for future you know production sleds Mm -hmm. yeah so uh, let's let's jump into uh jump into lineup so so we went uh you you did that we went and rode some trail sleds up north of you uh and then we met up the next morning and went over to uh, there's sheraton somewhere east of Montreal, Canada. And yeah, I don't know how to say the names up there. Yeah, when, yeah, Saint <laughs> Hyacinth or something. I don't know. Yeah, probably Idahoans are not supposed to pronounce those words. But uh, went over there and watched the uh, the club reveal. You know, the model twenty twenty five reveal, and uh, learned everything about that. So let's start with the mountain sled. Landon, you're a, you're a free ride guy, right? I I prefer the free ride. Yes, yeah, from the factory, and that's mainly for the suspension. And you're, so what are you on right now? Uh, currently on a 2024 uh, SKU Freeride 850 Turbo 146. And how do, you, how do you like the 146? Seems like a lot of guys, especially guys like you that are doing that technical, lots of uh, re-entries and bow ties are, are migrating to the 146. The, uh, to sum it up, I'd say the 146 is, is the perfect sled for 90% of days. Uh, especially when you like playing and doing the re-entries and the jumps and, and, uh, being aggressive, trying to, trying to maintain speed, uh, keeping it challenging, even if it's a little bit mellower terrain. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, all around a, a super fun sled for 10% of the days you're, you're, uh, you know, you're, you're pinning it around burning, uh, a lot of fuel trying to, you know, not get stuck all day. And, and, uh, it's just a, trying to survive mission all day because the snow is snow is too deep for for uh 10 percent of the days but it's uh it's still it's still it's it's awesome yeah yeah so that's kind of the trade-off is is the playfulness of that sled is worth you know giving up the mobility on the on the super deep days like yeah you can't go everywhere yeah. you want to on those crazy deep days but man the rest of the time it's yeah. it's just so flipping fun what, mm -hmm. uh, what did you, have you always ran, I mean, they haven't always made 46s, but what was your previous track length on your sleds? Uh, for 2017 and 18, I was on a 154 and then, uh, uh, did you ever go to the big, to the big bus, the 175? No, no, I've actually, I've had a little bit of seat time on 165s, but I've, uh, I've only ever ridden a 175 for I don't know 20 minutes, and and uh, it, it it wasn't even a turbo either. So it, it was it was yeah a big school bus that it was hard to turn. It sure went up the hills good, but <laughs> yeah, I'll bet. Um, yeah, yeah, it's uh, the 175 is is quite long. Yeah, cool. Uh, yeah. Bruce, Bruce, you remember the the updates to the 25 free ride? Let's start with that one. Okay. Run run through the list of everything that's different on the free ride. All right, we got the rack steering. That's probably the biggest one. Okay. Um, and then, oh, what did they do? The um, let's see. It's got the shot. The KBY Pro shocks. Is that new on the free ride? Uh, the shocks are the same. Shocks are the same. The the expert got the got the piggyback shocks. Okay. The free ride. Yeah, got the rack steering and got the uh, the updated ski. Oh yeah. So it's still the DS4, DS4 pilot ski, ski, but they they cut the edges on the tail end of it for yep. a little bit taper. Yep. So and then I think on all models they drop the steering post down to 120 millimeters. 
lowered that a little bit. Yeah, so everything has the low riser. Mm -hmm. All the all the deep snow models come with the low riser now. Yep. Um, they still got yeah, the, that's super cool. I, uh, you like that better? Notice that too. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think it's great that the trend for for uh, lower risers for better control is finally sinking in. That's cool. And then the uh, what do we got? New drivers, uh, drive, yeah, drive drivers. sprockets. So they across the board, um, Summit X Expert and Freeride new drivers, new drive sprockets that are designed to reduce vibration. So the sprocket tooth is a little bit taller. The base of the sprocket is a little bit wider. Uh, so it just kind of rotates the track on, you know, engages the track and then releases from the track with less vibration. Because yeah. that, that original driver that this replaces came out in 2017 when the Gen 4 came out. Yeah. And you're supposed to be able to run your track a little looser, they say. Yeah. With this new driver. Yeah. Yeah. The old driver was pretty sensitive to track tension. Yeah. And you could wind up in a situation where you're ratcheting quite a bit, which yep. is where, you know, I like to have a guy like you in the group because when it ratchets i'll just like yeah. <laughs> i'll tighten your track yeah your tools with you right perfect yeah i do i do i do yeah uh landon what do you think about rack steering and the move on the free ride to go to rack steering uh that'll be like it uh looking at the pictures i haven't ridden the free ride with uh or you know i've, I've ridden a uh, mxz that i i'm not even 100 sure if i have the rack steering but it's it, you know it sure seemed to be a bit easier to steer although all, all i did was trail ride with it uh, the rack steering for the free ride. I'm, I'm, I'm quite excited to try that. If it, uh, if it actually creates less bump steer, like when you hit bumps, if it, uh, if it doesn't turn the skis as, as like doesn't make the handlebars twitch as much, it'll be, uh, it'll be really cool. I think it'll, it'll be beneficial. Yeah. So Bruce, can you describe the difference between like the summit steering, the, the traditional steering post and the rack steering? Yeah, um, that day we got to go ride the 25s, you know, behind your cabin. We did have a uh, 24 free ride with the non-rack, and then we had this new one at the rack. And <clears throat> it was good to compare both side by side because you could definitely, down the trail, you could definitely tell the rack steering um, benefited the sled. Less feedback into the bars, seemed to hold the line better, didn't dance so much on the trail. You felt more in control. And then up in the hills, um, you know, we've talked about this before. I'd like to go ride it again in some different snow, but um, it did feel like it wanted to come back to center just a little bit. You know, when you got on the side picking through the trees, um, our snow was a little weird that day. Some powder with some, you know, underneath was a little sketchy, a little hard layer pants. I don't know if the skis were just digging in, but it did feel like it wanted to center back. But I, I feel like, like anything else, you get a few hours on it. Um, I think it's going to benefit the sled overall. Yeah. Yeah. I th and I think that, that what we were feeling that, that, that desire to return to center so that the rack steering, the steering post goes down, you know, through the pipe mm -hmm. to the bulkhead and on a summit or on last year's free ride or the 2024 free ride, both, um, tie rods, left and right tie rods are connected to the steering post yeah. on a pitman arm at the bottom of that. So the difference between that and rack steering is the rack steering steering post comes down, go through the pipe, attaches to the bulkhead, the right steering tie rod connects to the pitman arm on the steering arm. And then there's a linkage rod that connects to the same pitman arm and goes over to another pivot that's mounted to the bulkhead. Yeah. And then the left, the left tie rod connects to that pivot point. So you've got this linkage in between the left and right steering uh, and it gives it a mechanical advantage. So, when you're cornering and hitting bumps and going through moguls and everything, you've got the mechanical advantage of holding the skis in a turn position without the bumps deflecting and pushing the sled back to yeah. straight. And I think what we're feeling in the mountain is uh, when, when you're side heeling and you're counter steering and everything, that mechanical advantage, advantage basically flips the scales and gives the mountain a little more ability to push the, the, the skis straight. It's, it's, it's hardly noticeable. I don't think anybody... Yeah going from a 24 to a 25 is going to pick up on that. Yeah, I don't either. As much as we would just because we're looking for it. Yeah. Um, and honestly, somebody that buys a 25 or snow checks or whatever and then gets on the next fall that just come off a 24. Yeah. Probably will. Yeah. We'll never notice the difference. Yeah. Overall, the, the benefit is definitely there. Yeah, like, I agree. If you're a free ride. So, so Skidoo has segmented the mountain sled, the, the deep snow segment. So you've got your, your X, which is the lightest one in the lineup and easiest to ride, less, less effort. Probably doesn't have as much precise control, though, as the others. And then you've got the expert in the middle. 
also a, a narrower 34 inch front end more aggressive rider uh track doesn't flex skid doesn't flex so this is like your precision mm -hmm. hold, the, hold the edge hold the line and then you got the free ride for guys like Lannon. They just jump every flipping thing they yeah, can see. It's young. Or, or upside it's down. Pain. Yeah. Yeah. And just, just <laughs> super aggressive riding and, and big bumps. And, and that, that sled goes through moguls like, like nobody's business. Um, it is a fun sled. And so it, they're only putting rack steering on the free ride for that reason. Like, like this, is a, this is a rider that tends to be more aggressive and could use a little more precise steering and that advantage. And it, it's, it, it's a pound of weight mm -hmm. gain. So it's a little heavier. Uh, the free ride is already heavier than a than a Summit X or an Expert, right? But I don't think that the weight is as big of a deal there in that category. Landon, do you, do you are you worried as much about weight where you're looking for a sled that that is built to be ridden this aggressively? Uh, not not exactly because that weight, the added weight, is from an uh, extremely important part of the sled to me, which is the suspension. C forty is all around on the free ride like you know you you could add 10 more pounds to it if, if it meant having that suspension because it's uh significantly uh better at soaking up bumps and and taking the aggressive riding than the smaller uh the the even the expert shocks which are uh 36 millimeter shocks right yeah and so and you talk about like okay am i willing to to accept more weight for bigger shock capacity you go to like a lynx re and now you got like these massive shocks and, and stuff gets really heavy. The rear suspension gets really heavy because of the way it's designed. It's a totally different suspension setup than a summit or a free ride, but, but yeah, you're, you're, yeah. you're exactly right there. Weight doesn't matter when you're looking for that kind of suspension performance. Not quite as critical. Mm -hmm. to, I, I didn't notice this at the, at the show until I looked at this spec sheet, but for the shredder RE, the, the front shocks are now pro forties as well, which is, which is really awesome. Uh, they were 36 last year. And yeah. then the, the rear shock, they even put it bigger to 46. So yeah. that's, that's really awesome for the Link Shredder RE. Yeah, the, the Shredder RE had a, a 43 millimeter last year. So that, that goes up to a 46. So th you're not going to find anything with the shock capacity as big as that Lynx RE. I mean, that thing is, that thing is a monster. And yeah. can, just, just watching Andreas on that thing, like it can take whatever you throw at it. Yeah. But it's designed yeah. for that stuff because that's what those guys in Finland and Sweden do is their snow is harder and they just jump. A lot of them just jump. Yeah. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, Summit mm -hmm. X. So dropping down to the Expert. So the Expert for uh, for 25, what are the upgrades on that this year, Bruce? Um, they got the piggyback shocks on the front, which I think is a great idea. Um, let's see, what else did they get? Um, of course they got the low rise bar. I should know all this. I've been around them. Um, yeah, I'm just kind of throwing this. Yeah. They've, they've got the color options this year, which is cool. A lot of people were, you know, I feel like a lot of people last year picked their color and not actually the sled that they should have been on. Um, they all, they've got the 10 and a quarter touchscreen display, um, with the building GPS. Um, so, so going back to the color low, when, when the summit expert came out and it was red and white, um, so this has kind of been the process is like, let, let's have, let's have a line of mountain sleds where we have one that's just kind of the basic, you know, do it all. Anybody can ride it. And then let's have one that's like set up like a, like a KTM Erzberg edition, like the, the hardcore rider mm -hmm. type thing. And then let's have one that's kind of off to the side. That's, that's, uh, got all the bells and whistles. It's the ultimate suspension package and everything so that'd be the free ride yep what they what they found out was people you know dealers weren't necessarily educating people as well as they should have or or people just didn't care That's right people just wanted the coolest looking one so everybody went out and bought the red and white expert the first year and then for the next couple of years a lot of the buying decisions have been made based on color mm -hmm. so for 25 they're just like screw it everything's the same color you can, get, <laughs> yeah. you can get whatever you want same color except for the free ride yep um you can get all three the summit x the expert and the free ride you can get those in black uh as far as x and expert go you can get them in uh monument gray or dusty blue which is a matte navy blue um and there there's a breakdown of you know one of them like the the expert you can only get the turbo in a certain color yeah the x you can only get the turbo in a certain color yep you can get any of them in black. 
Yeah. And then the free ride gets the flare yellow. That's kind of the, it's supposed to be the standout, you know, and, uh, um, Pascal at, at dinner, you know, when we were in West Yellowstone talking about that and, mm-hmm. Was it red or Brock that was like, uh, I don't like, it was red. Yeah. It was like, oh, that color, that yellow color, like that's too much for me. And yeah, Pascal was like, well, awesome. Then, then it's perfect because yep. that's what it's supposed to do is kind of be talked about, talked about and, and so, so bright and so bold that maybe you don't like it or you do like it, but mm-hmm. it's, it's, it stands out. Yeah. And it kind of sounds like, and maybe I'm not supposed to say this, but it kind of sounds like that's their, their go-to each year, just some bold new color on that free ride. Yeah, I definitely think you'll see that. Do you, what do you think of that flare leaf yellow there, Landon? Oh, it's going to be green anyway. So. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, no, the, uh, one of the coolest things that stood out to me is is uh, is those skis. Like from the factory, those uh, mixed yellow and black skis are are super cool. And you know, the, the yellow overall is it's a really good looking sled in person. Yeah, for sure. And that mixed color ski, like that, that was the one thing Rhett was talking about. Like, why, why'd you guys do that? And yeah. somebody down the table was like, it ain't for you, Rhett. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, is, is your skis going to match your green though? Are you going to keep them skis on your green sled? Uh, yeah. Well, I always, uh, I always get uh, green skis with red loops anyways. I just, I just get the DS4 or like whichever, like DS3s when they were DS3s and then DS4s now. Um, so I'll, I have green skis right now that I'll I'll take off my sled right now and, oh, and gotcha. put it all back to stock to sell it and put them on the next one. You know they make a green track too. Oh yeah, green track? No, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you might look into That'd it. You sweet. might you might start something new there. New trend. <laughs> yeah, so the, uh, the the summit expert. It's interesting to note the summit expert and the free ride both get the pilot DS4 ski. And for 25, it's updated, like we talked about, the tail end is cut and tapered in a little more to reduce rider feedback. But if you drop down to the Summit X, which is still a spring order only model. You get the DS3s. You get the DS3s, which is a little uh, less aggressive ski. And in some conditions might be better, but in some conditions just doesn't quite bite as hard. Uh, Landon, you've you've been on all these skis. What what do you think? Uh, I... You know, like every every time I switch sleds from DS3 to DS4s, the the snow the snow has generally been pretty pretty good. And and you know when there's when there's deep snow, it is other than like flotation. Uh, it, you know, it's hard to tell the difference between little things such as the skis. Uh, I ran like I found with the DS3s with the removable tip in the in spring conditions, taking that tip off made them made them uh, a little bit more aggressive and. And being able to like cut through the cut through the snow better, uh, which with the tip off of the DS3s, I like personally, I'd say they're they're similar to the DS4s, uh, is what I found. Okay, we were talking to Mason Rutledge. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he's a Skidoo ambassador, and he's a, he's a pro hill climber, and he he runs the DS3, the old school DS no DS2, DS2 the old yeah. DS2 ski. Like he's got a stockpile of those things along with the stockpile of oh, wow. climb lace up boots yeah. for whatever reason. But <laughs> so he, he, he likes running the old DS two on everything. Cause he, he just, he, he wants a really, uh, forgiving mm, yeah. ski. Yeah. But he does change a little bit, you know, spring pressure and then his ski boots, you know, or the ski rubbers, like he changes all that out too. So I don't know if all that combo. Yeah. You know. he, he's disconnecting his sway bar. He's running a higher spring rate on the shocks. Like, yep. like his, his setup is, is quite a bit different than you're going to get just off the showroom floor. But. but it is interesting. He's dropping back, you know, to the DS twos versus even the threes. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of funny to watch the skidoo people look at him funny when he, when he said that he's running the <laughs> DS twos when they're already at the DS four. So yeah. it was kind of funny. Yeah, that is. Uh, one other thing we haven't mentioned yet that, uh, the, all, all the, all the deep snow sleds get a new seat. So it's a lower profile. It's about an inch lower, uh, lighter, a little light, uh, you know, a lot lighter weight on this. And, you know, we're, we're, we're pushing every time we get an opportunity to talk to Skidoo and the engineers, you know, we're pushing for, why don't you take one of these three, the X, the expert or the free ride, probably not the free ride, Pick one of them and just make that the lightweight sled. Uh-huh. Like, try to figure out how to get some more weight off of it. So the uh, the expert got a little bit heavier uh, for twenty five, two pounds heavier because now it's running piggyback KYB Pro thirty six shocks. Where last year they weren't piggyback, so the expert gains a little bit of weight. 
and the X actually loses a little bit of weight because it's going to the lighter seat and it has the KYB 36 plus front shocks. So the front shocks that were on last year's expert are now on this year's X. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, yep. so the, the X got an upgrade in suspension as well, lighter seat. So it lost a little bit of weight. Um, and that's, that's a trend I want to see continue. Like I want to see that the X just get lighter and lighter and lighter. Yeah. That'd be cool. I mean, but I'm talking like 15, 20 pounds lighter. Yeah. Get it down there. I, I, I think it's doable. Yeah. I think it's doable. We'll see where they go with that. But, um, Landon, what do you think about just the overall deep snow lineup and Skidoo's approach of having, uh, you know, three pretty distinct different mountain models? I think it's a great idea, and and uh, we already we already talked about the uh, the color as well. I think it's I think it's great that they're offering uh, the different models in all the like in in the same color. So then that's not a deciding factor. So then you know people can sit down either with the with the salesman at the dealership or looking at the spec sheets themselves and and figure out and watch videos like Skidoo even on their website. They have a great video with Carl Kuster talking about you know the the differences between the X the expert and the free ride so hopefully people do do research figure out which sled suits their riding style the best and uh i think Skidoo did a great like pretty good job with uh distinguishing making it making it a, like more of a clear difference between the x the expert and the and the free ride for people yeah and i think they're they're hitting that pretty hard i think they'll get even more aggressive over with that for mm-hmm. the next couple of years like trying to trying to have a broader distinction like a, a like just make these things even more more separate because yeah. right now they're still pretty similar. Yeah, you know, the free ride's probably the standout. But uh, Landon, mm-hmm. you got to check out that new uh, the deep snow seat, the ultralight seat that has the belt storage underneath, right? Yeah. What do you yeah. think of that? That was cool. It was uh, it was neat. It it'll be interesting to to ride it with the like just sitting on it in the showroom. You, you know, at, at first it's like oh, are you gonna be able to feel the belt, and it's. Uh, didn't didn't seem like it just sitting there, but you know, after after riding that side a, a, a bunch and sitting on the seat, it'll be interesting to see how it how it feels. But uh, I think that's a great spot for the belt belt to be uh, instead of in that little pocket cover uh, behind the gas tank there. Yeah, um, I think I think that makes we'll more sense. Work it. Well, how many? Yeah. How, how much do you sit on the seat in a ride? Really? Maybe on the no. way home when you're tired. No, you don't. <laughs> so <laughs> slowly going over the left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, it is a good idea. Speaking of accessories, they've got that new soft glove box extension. The this goes on the on the hood right above the gauge, replaces the hard cover with a with a zippered pouch, and increases the capacity of that glove box. Uh, what does it say? Thirty percent. So thirty percent more keeps the snow out. Um, did you get a chance to play with that when we were in the showroom there, Landon? Yeah, that that is probably the accessory of the year for Skidoo, I'd say, because uh, as soon as as soon as that's available, I'm definitely getting that because it uh, on when they had that real lightweight hood in 2022 with no storage compartment, and then they they made that uh, soft bag available. It that was that was really nice to be able to even put a water bottle in and in your phone, and and so this is similar to that, and and uh, uh, yeah, excited excited to have that on the side. Yeah, I th- if I'm a Skidoo guy, I think I'm putting one of those on every one of my sleds for sure. Like it's just yeah. it's just such a better yeah. design than that hard shell that they come with. It's it's one yeah. of those things. It's like why doesn't it just come with this bag? But you know, accessories are meant to be sold for extra money. So yeah, you know, and it's even got a power port power port in there, correct? Yeah, you so can you plug, can plug your phone plug in. Phone in there, yeah, because yeah. you know, because that uh, the ten point two five inch digital screen requires your phone to be That's plugged right. in for certain features. Yeah. So yeah, that it's good. it's all set up for that to hold your phone. Yeah, pretty cool. Uh, gauge. Let's talk about that for a minute, Landon. The the ten point two five inch touch screen. So now it has built in GPS. Uh, do you do you use that? Uh, were you using that gauge on your free ride, or were you running the small gauge? No, I uh, I I personally run the smaller gauge. Uh, there's less less weight, and then if uh, if I do if I you know, I I do all this messing around, jumping and and everything, but uh, on the overcast days, do a lot of tree riding too. And everyone knows with tree riding, it's uh, pretty easy to smash up a hood. So personally, I don't <laughs> I don't do the big screen add-on because uh, that's one more thing to to smash if you if you swipe your hood off. <laughs> um, but it is cool. Like I've uh, I've played around with it on on a buddy sled, and and it is it's 
nice, especially for this year with the built-in GPS, not having to have your phone plugged in all the time to see the maps and where you are and to track. Because, uh, you know, it was super foggy the one day and, and Buddy had that screen. And it was nice that he didn't have, you don't have to pull your phone out, look at your uh, maps on your phone to figure out, you know, the direction to go. He, he just, you know, wiped his screen off and glanced down and, and uh, kept leading the group out of that area. So it is, it is cool to have on there, just, just not for me. Yeah, and I and I think it is a good feature too that they've got the built-in GPS now. You can leave you can leave waypoints as you're riding, so you can just tap mm-hmm. the screen, leave a little mark, and then uh, if you get if you get to a point where you need to get back to where you were, you can pull up that waypoint and then you know see where which way you need to go. You can see your location on the map. You have the topographic features of the terrain. Uh, you're not able to see other riders yet at this point. You know that's a that's a technology that Garmin has. Uh, you know, Polaris has kind of a an arrangement there to use that technology, um, and I'm sure they kind of have some exclusive rights there. Articat is uh, is basically just having Garmin, you know, create their their gauge, uh, so they're able to do that. Yeah. Um, it'd be cool, you know. Ultimately, it'd be nice if everybody could see everybody, regardless of brand. I yeah. think we'll get there at some point, but I think so too. Well, you know, this intellectual property yeah, isn't quite that easy to navigate, so it, it, it takes a few years to get that. Um, so you, you're you up there in Sycamus, B.C. Uh, you you know Carl Kuster and the CKMP guys pretty well, uh, but you were able to meet uh, some of the other ambassadors, Tony Jenkins, Steve Martin, Ross Robinson. Uh, Cole. Yeah, Colton, Colton. from Lynx. Uh, what, what do you think of meeting those guys and uh, getting to know them a little bit? Uh, really cool. It's, uh, it was uh, great being able to meet those guys and it's, uh, it's cool that, you know, it's when you, when you talk to them, they're, they're just, they're just another, another guy that loves guy or girl met, uh, uh, Muskoka MJ there. Uh, Oh, I just know her, know her as Muskoka MJ. Um, yeah. Yeah. MJ was there too. She's, she's a a skidoo. Yeah. MJ. Yeah. 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 You know, meet, meeting all of the ambassadors, they're they're just they're just another person that loves snowmobiling, and uh, super cool to talk to. Great people. It uh, yeah, it was it was it was really cool getting to know them a little bit. Uh, and then you also got to meet up with uh, you know the Skidoo engineering team and and you know Pascal Vincent and uh, a lot of these guys that are involved in uh, developing these snowmobiles and and were you able to kind of see you know how this team works behind the scenes and and who some of these guys are like for us it's always interesting to get to know the engineering teams because then you understand why the product is the way it is better um and when Mm -hmm. you and when you can put a face to the name with the engineers and and know their background and and understand, you know, what their specialty is, then you can kind of see, okay, well, this, this guy's over suspension and chassis dynamics. So let's go pull him aside when we get a second. Let's talk about like, Hey, let's run some bigger shocks. Or what do you think about doing this? Like, yeah. like that, that's, that's kind of yeah. how you get to know those guys. Yeah, it is. I agree. It was, uh, it was really cool to be able to, being able to chat with them. I can't remember any, well, I, it's hard to remember names with, with the amount of people that I met, met while I was there, but uh, it was, it was awesome being able to talk to you and, and meet the engineers and and uh, probably one of my probably one of the biggest things was was talking to the lead engineer and and you know telling him you know it's awesome that uh, the like free ride factory suspension is T40s because you know that that's fantastic and and a lot of people appreciate that that I know so um, you know it's, it's kind of cool you know telling the engineer an engineer himself and it's like yeah this is this is awesome yeah. Yeah, that, that that's kind of funny you mentioned that because uh, two years ago, two or three years ago, uh, I think after the 2022 uh, Lynx, it was called the Boondocker back then before they switched to the Shredder, we went and rode that. So so Lynx is obviously under the BRP umbrella, but it's, it's a separate team. Like these guys are on their own. Lynx is a standalone company over in Finland. And they, they develop and they do their own R&D and they come up with their own chassis designs and suspension designs. They share the motor, obviously. They share components of the chassis, obviously. But they're doing their own thing. And we rode that 2022 uh, Lynx Boondocker DS, and the suspension was amazing. And we we couldn't stop talking about how fun that thing was on the big bumps. Huh. And and so we went and we were 
hanging out with uh, Frederick Dietrich who uh, is the the head guy at Skidoo as far as product development, product manager, and uh, talking about that Boondocker with him, like he was he was not thrilled that we liked the Boondocker better than the free ride. And he was like, okay, well, well, why, what do you like about it? And it's, it's just fun. Like it's fun everywhere. Like, um, obviously the, the, the links gives up a little bit in deep snow performance, but to make that thing run like that on the trail was just so flipping fun because you can hit anything as hard as you want. Huh. Um, shocks are mm -hmm. huge. Suspension just soaks it up. So they went to work and when they released the 2024 free ride with, you know, the 15 inch wide track, the, the changes to suspension, the big shocks, um, all the, the things that they did to that. And then we went out and rode that and it's like, holy cow, this thing is awesome. Like this free ride just bridged the gap. And then Fred was like, yep, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. There you go. Now, yeah. now you have a skidoo and you don't have to sit there and tell me how much you like the, the link, the links, but we still do. That's we funny. still give them crap because the RE is, is such a phenomenal sled, but those, those guys are, you know, they all get along and they all work together, but they don't work directly together. So links and skidoo you know they they create their products separately and they, they compete like i think they made the comment that they compete uh it's it's a bigger competition between them than it is between other brands huh. because you know they're sharing components cool. so obviously they want to create something that's unique and yeah so they're they're pushing against each other as well as skidoo's pushing against polaris that's cool an articat that, that type of thing it is kind of cool how they all hang out you know you, you sometimes you think they're one but um, they are two separate. Yeah, they, and they've got, cool. they definitely have different approaches. I mean, Lynx, you look at the Lynx uh, DS, and, man, the, the skis are wide and, and rigid, and the suspension's totally different. Like, it's it's mm -hmm. not the same sled. Everybody thinks it's just a red skidoo. It is not. Yeah. It is totally different. Totally, yep. Yeah. All right, Landon, uh, we'll let you go. Bruce and I are going to hang out. We're going to talk about uh, some of the trail sleds that we rode up there, the backcountry and the MXZ, but... Um, I just, I think it was really cool to, uh, to have you out there win this contest and have you come out and hang out and, uh, and meet you and, uh, let you take a look at all these 25 skidoos with us and, uh, get to know you a little better. Yeah, it was uh, awesome to get to know both of you guys as well. And, uh, thankful for the awesome opportunity and, and, uh, yeah, it was, it was awesome. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks, Landon. We'll uh, catch you later. Everybody else out there, uh, go check him out. LJP116 on Instagram. Also, he's got a he's got a really cool account going, mountainstandardtime.ca on Instagram, and that that kind of pushes people to his YouTube channel. Landon's a content creator. Uh, he puts out a ton of great content on on many platforms. Uh, you're working for a dealership up there in uh, in Alberta. That's right. Yeah, doing doing uh, in, in partnership with a dealership, Base Camp Motorsports, out of Calgary, Alberta. Yeah, so base camp. So, yeah, so Landon Landon's a fun follow. He's got a lot of good content going on. Uh, stories pretty much every day. Uh, the guy rides a ton. So yep. he's uh, a good dude too. Yeah. So jump on Instagram, give him a follow, and uh, we'll catch you later, Landon. See you. See you, Landon. Really appreciate that. Have a good one, guys. Bye. You too. But well, Bruce, let's talk some trail riding. <laughs> trail. Here we go. So, are you ready to convert? Go go sell the uh, summit and get a backcountry. Yeah, possibly. Because that thing was a lot of fun. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. <laughs> An 850 turbo at sea level, cruising down the trail. I wish the trail was, wasn't was quite as windy so we could see how fast that thing would go. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so that MXZ turbo, we when they re, when they released that in Island Park or West Yellowstone two years ago, mm -hmm. um, we went and found, like, some wide open, safe areas. And, and this is the MXZ uh, XRS comp package with the Turbo R. And so this thing's got the water methanol mm. injection system to cool. Mm -hmm. So you're not, you know, the summit obviously is going through deep snow, so it can maintain right. the temperature. So they're using water, water to cool the, the turbo on the MXZ XRS. And holy cow, we had that thing up over, uh, I think we, Jerry Matthews and I were racing and we hit 118 miles an hour. Really? On that thing. And uh, I mean, moving. And, but, but it, it just, it was like on rails. Yeah. You know, normally you get, you get anywhere near a hundred miles an hour on, on some stuff and you're just like, yeah, that's yeah. a bad idea. Something's going to go south. Well, holy cow, that thing flies. So that's so cool. Yeah. So we, we go over to uh, Quebec um, and they, we, we get off the plane in Montreal, get on a, well, we hop in the car and we run up two and a half hours kind of yeah. north. Uh, in a snowstorm. Yeah. In a, in a blizzard. <laughs> 
and get into some pretty good country and get up the next morning and we, we go ride the MXZ. So the 2025 MXZ XRS and the 2025 uh, backcountry. Back and so these sleds have the new Raz RX front suspension, which is a 43 inch ski stance. Uh, they were 39 inch ski stance. Um, and you, you can still get some models with the 39 inch ski stance. Mm-hmm. Um, so the Raz RX is the new wider front end. The spindles are taller. Uh, I can't remember. Ex- I'm sure I've got this here somewhere. Yeah, something to do with the spindle, the angle of the shock, um, and your upper and lower A arm, right? Yeah. So the Raz RX has a it's a 26 millimeter taller race inspired spindle. Uh, the lower A arm mount is 11 millimeters higher, and the top A arm mount is 26 millimeters higher. So it spreads the A arms out. Mm-hmm. Uh, taller spindle. Uh, it's got a, a tilted shock angle, so the base of the shock is closer to the spindle. Yep. Um, oh, there it is right there. Uh, sway bar linkage is moved closer to the bulkhead, so brought that in central. Uh, so all of this results in 20% less chassis roll than previous. To mountain riders, talking about reduced chassis roll <laughs> on a trail. That's like, like swearing. Well, yeah, it's a totally different concept because you get on a 34-inch ski stand Summit Expert and race down the trail, and yeah. you're laying over the handlebars just just trying to do 30 around a corner yeah. without that thing rolling. Exactly. On. Because unless, it, it, unless you're doing 50, 60, and oh yeah, not a care in the world. Yeah, you couldn't even feel that inside ski lift. Yeah, like it's it's just it's like a race car. Yeah, which was really cool. Um, let's see. So and and the new spindle they moved the trail back by four millimeters. So it's it's the same trail uh, as the MXZ XRS or the the MXZ RS mm-hmm. the 600, which is the race sled, the snowcross sled, and the the steering ratio has been changed to compensate so that the overall steering effort is the same. Uh, the suspension travel on the uh, Raz RX is increased by 14 millimeters, so 11 inches total front travel, and I and I kept hearing the guys from the other magazines, Snowgoer and Snowtech talking and and uh luke lester from uh super tracks tv mm-hmm. talking about like oh wow you guys have always had the best rear suspension now the raz rx has a front suspension that matches the rear suspension and i was like yeah yeah I, sure the 39 was cool too <laughs> like I, I i couldn't tell you a difference but but they were excited they were yeah they were thrilled about it it, it was cool to watch yeah and we we just kind of hung out in the back of the group and kind of let those guys you know mm-hmm. this is this is your this is your air element, you know. Yep. You guys take first pick, but we got to ride uh, everything. Yeah. Um, what What did you think of the MXZ versus the backcountry, just on those trails? Oh, I don't know. I was just kind of laughing under my under my helmet the whole day. Um, it, it's cool to feel on these trail sleds the suspension work differently. Like you can feel the transfer. Versus, you know, on a mountain sled, you got to get in the mountains to kind of really feel the, the, the suspension work. But just kind of, I guess, the lift over the hills, you know, you can feel the sled lift, but it's not wheeling like your your backcountry sled. Yeah. Um, you can feel the weight transfer. Um, skis come up, and then it just settles in and pretty much is hugging the trail. Um, difference between the two, I don't know. <laughs> I was just having too much fun. <laughs> yeah, it it was it was seriously. I, I mean, I know uh, we're mountain riders and we don't talk about trail riding, but holy crap, that was fun! Mm-hmm. Like that was that was like going to Vegas and renting a Ferrari. Yeah, like it was so flipping fun. Yeah, and it reminds me of of way way back when you know before mountain sleds were such precision mountain machines. Yeah, you jump were, on a XCR six hundred and just go put 100 miles on a day yeah 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 blow down the trail and 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 trail riding and trail racing was fun but Mm -hmm. to what you were talking about the rear the suspension suspension on a trail sled is has a different job than suspension on a mountain sled you know suspension on a on a mountain sled is basically number one job is to get up on top of the snow without trenching yep so it's designed to pull the front arm up and kind of collapse and create a really gradual approach angle um and then its second duty is just whatever it can do after it does that job first is to absorb bumps. Yeah. And so historically mountain sleds aren't great at bump absorption. It's a, it's a falling rate suspension typically and, and uncoupled and you know, they, they do their job in deep snow, but man, you get on a trail sled like these, like the MXZ or the backcountry, mm-hmm. where the suspension is designed like a trophy truck to actually keep the chassis flat and absorb the bumps 
Yep. And like like you were saying, like you get on a on a mountain sled and you hammer it and you wheelie like yeah. wheelie up to the rear bumper and you can wheelie these things over. You hit the throttle on a backcountry when you got traction and you like better you were, be hanging on. Like you were <laughs> saying, yeah, it just sets the weight back and then it stops because the suspension is coupled and it and it just stops the weight transfer. Yeah. And the skis come off the ground a couple inches and they stay there. And you just launch. Yeah. And then and then when you settle back in into a corner, it just drops the nose back down on the snow and gives you positive steering. And yeah. And you're, you don't have any ski lift in the corner. You know, everything's just planted. Yeah. So that's, that was the fun part. You just throw a knee out and hug like them. What's them racers that on the bikes that dragging their knee around the corner. Yeah. 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 The MotoGP guys. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's how you feel. It was so flipping fun. It was a good time. Uh, Luke, Luke Lester and I were, were joking about it and he was like, yeah, I've always, you know, I've always had a hard time because I was like, I'm sore. Like we're trail riding and I'm sore. He's like, yeah, I, I don't know how you guys like stand up the entire ride on a mountain sled. Like I've never been able to do that. And I'm like, I don't know how you guys sit down on an yeah. entire ride. Like that hurts. Yeah. Yeah. I caught myself standing up a few times. Yeah. Cruise down the trail. Yeah. Yeah. Just <laughs> stand yeah. up and ride these little <laughs> MXZs like a mountain sled, you yeah. know, staggered stand. Yeah. And like, I was like looking for, the trail. for lines off the trail. You know, you had that mountain instinct to take this MXZ oh, yeah. off the trail. Yeah. But we couldn't. So no, it, it was kind of fun. There were a couple spots out there that looked fun though. Yeah. But. They, yeah, just lots of rocks and trees. The trees are tight there. Yeah, they are tight. It would have been a little slow going, but. Yep. Yeah, I I think I like the uh, the backcountry, though, a little more than the than the MXZ. And for what reason? Just because the longer track and the little higher track lug. I, I'm sure if you're an MXZ guy, you're you're putting metal in the track. Yeah. You're, like you're putting studs in the track. And so <laughs> on the trails that we were riding where it's kind of icy in the corners and super hard pack, like you did the launch control start. Yeah. And all and, I did was spin. And you just spun. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure those guys are putting metal in the track. That's um, true. So the MXZ spun a lot more than the than the backcountry. The backcountry, just the longer track, just had more bite to it. So yeah. when you're coming out of the corner, you'd hit the throttle and you, you'd move a little quicker where the MXZ would just spin. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what the feeling is like with, with studs in the track, but I really like the backcountry. And then just having the longer track, tends to bridge the chatter bumps a little bit yeah that's true so it it was a little smoother ride in that sense like yeah. i mean we're talking about like we're used to 154 rail or 165 rail. right and moguls up to here yeah yeah you know, and, and the back country's a, a 137 or a 146 and it was it was fun the back country 146 with the raz rx front suspension like i would i would love to have one of those in the garage we should get one on the test ride Fleet. We should. <laughs> what would you give up? Uh, would you give up a summit to have a backcountry? Hmm. Maybe. On a year like this, maybe. I, I mean, you're like, well, the problem is we'd need two, or we're going to be sitting on the ride and double. Yeah, that's true. Hey, Bruce, want to go for a ride? <laughs> yeah, that, would, that wouldn't look <laughs> One good. One sled in the back of the truck? <laughs> it's been done, I'm sure. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. No, we're, we're, not, we're not into that. Right? But uh, uh, it, it would be fun to have a couple trail sleds and just. It would go. be. I mean, the West has phenomenal trails, like, yeah. like from Utah to Wyoming, Idaho, stuff over by Togarty, Montana, like, or Togarty, Wyoming. I mean, we used to go ride all that stuff, and the trails are, are awesome, but man, on mountain sleds, you're just, yeah. this is the last thing you want to do. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It'd be fun. It'd be fun to have both in your garage. Yeah, it would be. Maybe that, that's a conversation for another day, but. Yeah. Yeah, that that was a fun experience. Um, so cool new stuff on the on the Skidoo trail sleds. Uh, according to the people that know this stuff really well, the you know Snowgoer, Super Tracks TV, and uh, Snow Tech Magazine. You know, um, Kevin Belke was on was on the video. Mm -hmm. You know, he's he's pretty renowned for his expertise in yeah. trail stuff and and how things work and all that. And he was raving about the Raz RX front end. Like finally, this this front end matches the rear end. Um, Again, I, yeah, couldn't tell the difference. Yeah, but sounds good to they, me. They both were fr pretty freaking awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, and they had they had rack steering too, so you you could kind of feel, you know, that was kind of fun to feel like, okay, here's rack steering on a trail sled, and then rack steering on a free ride the next week. Yeah, um, yeah, cool experience. Um, and then we we spent some time in the mountains. Well, we spent a lot of time in the mountains now on the twenty fives. Mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts on the changes to the free ride and the expert and the X. Um, I mean, the free ride got that rack steering. That's their biggest upgrade for the year. Um, 
And honestly, I, I think it's a great upgrade. I think it's it helps that sled out for what it's designed to do. Um, like Landon was talking, um, big jumps and drops and um, just more of a, a playful sled, you know, coming off rock ledges or whatever whatever them guys want to do or if they want to go down the trail a little bit, that rack steering, it helps, you know, absorb them bumps and less feedback through the through the handlebar. So I think that's a great upgrade for that. Um, on the expert, you know, they got the piggyback shocks. Um, I actually liked it better. I could tell difference up there this last week. Um, how it handled, it seemed to stay on edge a little better. It seemed to, I don't know, easier control. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I, just, I just really like that upgrade that the expert got. And then as far as the X goes, um, you know, I haven't ever been too much of a fan of the T-Motion. I felt like it's just too tipsy. But I was able, I think it was Monday, I was on the, the X for quite a while and actually really enjoyed it. Um, really easy to handle. The, you got to ride them all just a hair different. I felt like I was more up close to the bars on the X because it did come over so easy. So your balance point, mm -hmm. you know, wherever you're standing on the on the foot rails is uh, is pretty crucial on a, on a skidoo. Um, so it was kind of fun to figure that sled out. And then, yeah, you could just straddle the seat and... You know, if you want to look that way, it's going that way. It's almost like wherever you look, it's going to go. That's how kind of easy it was. So great upgrades for just little upgrades. It's crazy what little things will do to a sled to make it better. Yeah. So. Yeah. Like you say, the the X you can ride with your, with, you know, straddling the seat in a, mm -hmm. in a neutral riding position. You don't have to jump around on that thing very much. Yeah. And once you figure that out, like I get on the X and I override it. Like, yes, I, I, I drop a shoulder or something and the thing comes way over, yep. over too far. And then, so I'm constantly like, oh, too far coming back and then this way and then up oh, too far and coming yep. back where the expert, um, I guess I'm used to the expert. So that's why I, I ride the way I do. But if you get on the X and keep riding it that way, you're going to override it. Yeah. But I, I do like what you're saying that you can keep, keep a foot on each side of the sled and just, just cruise. Yeah. Very little effort. Yeah. Uh, the free ride. Yeah, that, that thing is fun, and but you got to be you got to be on your game to ride that thing. Like, you you got to ride it hard. Yep, and it, it rewards you for for that. But uh, well, we're gonna we're gonna do some uh, full sled reviews. We're gonna go through all the twenty fives, and we'll do a, a in depth review with the full gang here um, coming up. So if you're on, if you're watching this on YouTube, hit subscribe. Uh, to help us out there. Uh, let's build the channel up, and uh, if, if you subscribe, you'll, you'll you won't miss any of these episodes, especially when we get into the the twenty twenty five reviews coming up. Yeah, we'll start yeah. hammering those out. You know, we've got uh, a lot of good got stuff. A lot there. of Arctic Cat stuff to be covering and talking about. Yep. A lot of eight fifty eight stuff to talk about. Those are going to come out soon. Yep. Uh, Polaris releases their stuff March fourth, so we got uh, a week away. Yep, we got all the Polaris twenty twenty five stuff coming up to talk about. And in-depth reviews on all these uh, skidoos, and we'll and we'll have the full test crew in here to talk about that, so you can get more perspective and and more feedback. Um, thanks for listening again. Uh, check us out on uh, on YouTube, it's Snowest Magazine YouTube channel. Check us out on on Instagram, uh, Facebook. Follow Bruce Curbs on there. Uh, the rest of the Snow West test staff. Go to uh, snowwest.com and subscribe to the magazine if you want. We have a digital subscription that uh, just sends via email right to your phone. You can It's super easy to read on your phone. If you want the magazine in the mail, we still offer print subscriptions. You can uh, get that on there. And uh, go check out the Snow West merchandise. We've got hats, T-shirts, hoodies, all the, all the cool stuff on there, everything that the kids like, yep. I guess, these days. So anyway, all right, thanks for listening. We'll uh, catch, you, catch you guys later.